Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to uh, something a little bit different on the channel. Um, if this is your first time finding the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Give the video a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs down, but make sure you push that thumbs down button twice and uh, let's hop into this. All right guys, so in a couple of my other videos, um, the F-18, the TAMS F-18 was for sale and it has officially sold. Now I'm located in Canada and uh, this plane is getting shipped down to California. So uh, what do we need to do with that? Basically we need to build a crate and that's the, obviously the purpose of this video. If you couldn't tell by the thumbnail was we are gonna build a crate for the F-18 and I thought I'd share the process with you guys on how we do that. All right, guys, so I've created quite a few planes before, and um, so the F-18 is nothing abnormal. Uh, the only thing with it is uh, it's quite long, right? Um, I think probably some of the other planes I've created are probably a similar length, but... Uh, so anyways, uh, the past couple days, I have been going over this airplane and uh, taking some things out. So just to give you some uh, some shots here of what we've done, uh, we've taken the engine out because the owner, the new owner did not want the engine and the engine's already sold. Um, so the engine's out of the plane. So here is the um, guts of the plane, I guess. So what have we taken out of this plane? We've taken the lipo out because that's going with the uh, the engine. Um, what else here? So all the uh, the servo leads, and I'm, the reason I'm showing you this stuff is because if you have to create a plane, this is just a nice way to do it, right? So to make sure that the owner on the other end gets uh, something. I also like to send uh, pictures of the entire process um, I also, I'll show you some stuff at the back here that I did as well. So it makes it easier for the owner on the other end to, um, to put the plane back together and less headaches. And then you look better as a seller as well. Okay. So we've taken the, uh, the JR power box thing out, uh, gyro and stuff's left in there. All the leads are labeled. Uh, we've taken obviously the fuel pumps out. We've drained the fuel out of the system. That's a key thing. Uh, you don't want the stinky fuel and, um, Anyway, so everything's basically ready to go in the front end here. Um, now, a couple of the things with the gyro, I sent the uh, the new owner the current gain setting that I was using on the gyro, which is just a nice thing to do because he can basically plug that into his radio plus 71% or 71 points, minus 71 points, and it flies beautifully, right? It's already set up. So the other kind of key thing that I did here, and these are all in the pictures that I sent to the new owner, was uh, just marked all the uh, locations of the surfaces, right? The uh, other surfaces, ailerons, things like that are easy, but the uh, the elevators on the F-18 aren't that easy. So I just marked center, uh, marked full deflection one way, full deflection the other way, and then flap one, flap two, right? So I marked those on both sides. Obviously we've taken the, uh, the rudders off, taken the elevators off, and the plane's actually quite um, slender, not very tall. That's one of the pluses about the F-18. All right, so um, the next basic step for me is, and, and of course guys, let me throw it out there too. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, there's there's maybe better and easier ways, but it's really whatever works for you. Um, but ultimately, the there is one right way to do it. Make sure that you've done everything possible as a seller to make sure that this airplane shows up uh, in good condition. And I'll show you a couple of the uh, the important points that I like to focus on when I'm uh, when I'm building a crate for a plane, and a couple of the important points. So, anyways, first thing is I'm going to cut the base out of the. Um, of the, the, the crate that we're going to use. So I'm just going to take some basic measurements. I want to add um, a couple inches on the nose, a couple inches on the tail. Um, initially kind of have to figure out where the wings are, are going to sit. Um, hopefully the wings are, obviously you want to build a crate wide enough or tall enough where the wings can fit in. So you kind of have to put all that thought into, into place. So just so you have an understanding of what we're fitting in there, these are the two wings for the F-18. Now that outline, these bags are reused, so I think those uh, the the bags are too long, but uh, the the general width of it is is pretty much the same. 
Now don't judge, I've just been tossing everything in a pile, but uh, this is all the other stuff that goes in there. All of our ordnance right now is wrapped in these blankets. Um, all of our surfaces, uh, rudders and elevators are in the other, other bags, right? So those will be pretty easy to tuck in anywhere. Uh, we've got the extra parts that I included with the kit the gear and wheels and all that stuff. So that's all the stuff that I've got to fit in, but primarily I've got to focus on the length of the crate, the width of the crate, and how we're gonna fit the wings in. So I'm gonna take some basic measurements, draw out a bit of a plan, and I'll show you guys what I come up with. All right guys, so something you wanna think about is maximizing your wood. Okay, now this wood's really ugly on this side. Trust me, the other side looks a lot better. Um, but uh, you don't wanna be making a, a cut where you have to use four pieces of wood uh, to solve your problem instead of just maximizing and using two, right? So what I mean by that is my initial thought was if I make, so these are four by eight sheets of plywood, okay, so 48 inches by 96 inches. So if I make my crate width, um, so the bottom piece or the top piece, uh, the crate width 30 inches, that leaves me with 18 inches remaining Okay, to work on the height of the uh, of the crate. Now I'd like a little bit more height with the crate, so 20 inches, and that leaves me with um, 28 inches on the width. Okay, for the base of the crate. So because I'm going to be laying these wings on top of the plane, um, the width is really determined by the wing size because this is wider than the fuselage is. So, if I take the wing, squish the wing bag down a little bit, check the width. So if I use that measurement, 24 inches, that leaves me with 2 inches on each side if I go with the 28 inch measurement. So what I'm going to do to maximize my wood is I'm going to do the base, so the top and the bottom of my crate as 28 inches, and then I'm going to do the, um, the sides of the crate as 20 inches to give me a little bit more height. Now the height will make sense more as we get into this, uh, why you want to leave a little bit of extra height in the bottom, but um, I just wanted to share with you how to maximize and, and just think about how you're going to use your wood, um, especially right now. If you're watching this in, you know, when I made the video October 2020, uh, wood prices have shot up tremendously. So uh, I have some of this wood at my land, which is fortunate, but um, uh, if you were to go buy this piece of plywood right now locally, it's half inch plywood, you're looking about 50 to $60 for that piece of wood, where it used to cost about $28. So it's basically doubled for wood costs. So um, I'm gonna get this all measured out. It's stinking cold outside, so I wanna get all my stuff kind of measured and, and figured out. Then I got to open the garage door and get it outside. But uh, hopefully that uh, gives you some something to think about with maximizing your wood size. All right, guys. So got the bottom piece. The uh, the two by twos are screwed on. So this is the side the airplane's sitting on, and uh, this stuff's all loose on this side. But uh, <clears throat> once that was done, then I've got my uh, my riser piece screwed in at the bottom there, and. Um, all I'm doing now is just figuring out my, my box structure. So the reason I put this piece on there is because that's going to be the top. And I want to have uh, the risers like this. And then to be able to, uh, to put the 2x2s uh, the two on the top and then screw the, the top panel in place. So just figuring that stuff out. So basically what I'm going to do now is I'm going to screw this other side on. And then we will... Uh, start to work on what I'm going to do with the airplane. So I've got an interesting idea with that and I'll show you guys what my thoughts are and my opinion on the best way to do it. Now one thing you want to think about is when you put an aircraft in a crate like this, uh, the first thing you need to do is you need to put a 2x4 or something on the bottom and the reason you need to do that is so they can put a forklift uh, forks underneath okay, and the forklift can pick it up. Now the one thing to think about when you're doing that is if we were to take the F-18, put some foam in the bottom, just stick the aircraft in there, and what happens if the forklift driver, because, you know, sometimes they're sleeping, they uh, 
don't go low enough with their forks and boom, jam their forks into the, uh, the box and your plane sitting right here, boom, fork goes right into the, uh, the airplane. So that's what you wanna try and prevent. So the reason I say that is I'm gonna actually lift the airplane off the uh, bottom of the crate. So my padding strips are gonna go across and then the airplane's gonna sit on top of that and we're gonna leave a gap on the bottom in case a forklift driver was to punch his fork through the side. So those are the things to think about when you're crating. Think about the protecting from the worst case scenario. Uh, not everybody, nobody really cares that it's, you might have fragile written on the outside. Uh, nobody cares that you write, uh, you know, fragile airplane, aircraft, uh, model, whatever on the outside. They don't care, it's just a box to them. So think about that when you're packaging this up. Um, think about the fact that, you know, what happens if a forklift driver is driving and slams the brakes on and the box goes tumbling off the forks. Well, is the airplane and the wings and all that stuff gonna be okay if that happens? So you wanna think about those things when you're creating up these, uh, these airplanes and uh, that's it. So I'll show you the next steps once I'm done here. All right guys, bottom cross piece, pieces, braces installed. Obviously, this is the bottom of the box. You wanna make sure you're screwing in all directions, right? So flip the box onto its side, screwed in from the bottom. All right, so cross braces on the top end have been installed front and back. Now I've just marked my risers like this, and we will cut the risers on all four corners and get those installed. The reason I'm doing this in sections, guys, is because uh, I've got to open the door. My saw and stuff's outside. There's snow outside. It's cold, and uh, so I get all my measurements for something, go outside, cut it all, and then close the door and install it. All right guys, cross braces have been installed and the crate is starting to take shape. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna get my padding down and we're gonna work out where to put the, uh, the padding and things like that. And uh, we'll start uh, getting the aircraft put in the box. All right guys, so next thing I do is mark the former work on the crate. So what I mean by that is you don't want to have the, the fuselage on a fiberglass plane supported on the actual fiberglass because it's flexible, okay? So you want to have your supports on the former work itself. So we've got a bunch of formers in here. So we've got one, I mean, these, these are the ones I used anyway. So we've got this section back here. We've got the main one right there, fuselage joint, and we've got one up front here as well. So. What I've done is I uh, took the overall length of the plane, marked that on the box and split the difference. So we got two and a half inches uh, between this piece uh, front and back. So it's the same measurement on the front. So I've centered the plane in the box and then I started from the rear, worked my way forward. So we've got former number one, two, fuselage joint and front right there. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got this, uh, this thick foam, uh, actually it's, gymnasium flooring material is what it is but uh, I'm going to use this and lay down pieces in the bottom of the box and uh, that'll create my support system initially for the airplane uh, a couple other things that I'm going to do for the airplane is get the canopy back on get the, the rear back on wrap the canopy in bubble wrap uh, most likely actually wrap the entire plane in bubble wrap but we'll do an extra layer on the canopy bubble wraps all right there uh, we want to tape the gear doors closed because they'll be uh, they'll be sitting in the blank space there in between the former places. We don't want them to drop down and have a forklift leg puncture and wreck one of the doors, so we'll tape all the doors shut with uh, masking tape. And uh, that's the next step. All right, guys, so there is an example of what we don't want to do. So we don't want to just have one layer of padding, put the plane on it, and have not a very big gap, right? All right? Guys, we've got the canopy wrapped. We've got the first layer of bubble wrap in there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the plane, place it inside of the, uh, the box, and then we'll get the bubble wrapped, uh, bubble wrap nice and wrapped around it. Probably put another layer on top, and uh, then we'll work on getting the plane strapped down next. Right, guys, so one thing I like to use when I'm boxing up a, uh, a plane is I like to use canned foam, spray foam. Uh, works really well to glue things down. Obviously it expands. It's pretty slick. 
So anyway, as you go like that, grab your foam padding. That one's a little bit too long. And then you just stick the foam in place and she works beautifully. Just push that forward and there we go. So that works good. We've got a nice thick layer on the nose cone there, which is awesome. Um, once we get the plate on the rear of the, uh, the box, then we can add some pieces in on the tail cones as well. And uh, that'll hold that all together. So next thing I want to do is I want to work on the, the strap system or the system to, uh, to hold everything in place. So we have a couple options when it comes to that stuff. Um, we can use actual fabric strapping. Um, you can put it in a couple different places. The only key with that is you want to make sure that the plane's not going to slide, right? Which is why I put those bumpers on the front and the back. Um, and then you just have to be careful, obviously, where you're strapping it down. You probably want to strap it down on the formers as well. So all I'm going to do there is you can just screw the strapping down here, have it come up and over, and, uh, and hold everything in place. So. Uh, we can use strapping. The other thing you can do is you can put um, cross pieces made of wood screwed into the, the side boards and have those adding a little bit of compression as well too. The benefit of those is obviously they're adding more strength. We're probably going to use both and the reason we're going to use both is because then when we put the wings in here, the wings are actually resting on the, uh, the cross pieces and they're not resting on the fuselage. So we basically make this into to multiple compartments. So next thing I'm going to work on is just doing my strapping. I'll show you the uh, the final product here. All right, so I cut this end piece. Um, that's all screwed in place. So now I'm going to uh, fit my uh, my padding in the back here, and we'll get that uh, that um, glued or spray foamed in place. Same uh, same type of scenario as we did on the front. All right, so the rear end is done there, guys. Um, I had a little bit thicker foam, just this one piece. So it's, uh, I think, two inch foam. So I used two inch, two inch, and that uh, worked out perfect to hold the, uh, the airplane in place or the tail cones in place. Now keep in mind, I'm just using what I have. So I had this piece of quarter inch ply that I cut the back end from. The reason I use the quarter inch on the back is because we've got the uh, plywood holding the, um, the foam in place. I had an extra couple pieces of uh, this Luan stuff from my trailer build and uh, so I use that on the front because all the support is by those three quarter inch piece of plywood down there as the cross braces. So this is just to, uh, to close the crate basically. So Okay, so now with the, uh, the front and the back done, uh, now I'm going to work on the straps. Alright, so you can see the straps I added across the back here. And uh, obviously you're, you're being careful with the amount of tension you add. Um, you don't want to crush the airframe. So I just use these uh, are they? roofing siding screws. They're inch and a half long. They've got the washer on them as well. And I just get one side um, done down quite tightly and then add tension on the other side. So that will uh, that'll work good. I'm going to add another one across the main body and then we'll put one across the nose as well or we might just put two across the main body. I'll have to see what uh, what works out here. Um, I'm just using this, I rated my wife's sewing stuff, so I'm just using this Velcro, uh, the sew-on Velcro that I found in the basement and it's working good as strapping. All right guys, so I played around with this a little bit and I figured out what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add these two cross pieces and then the main wings can actually just lay over top of the cross pieces. I'm gonna put the other uh, surfaces in there as well too and then we will uh, probably just strap everything down with some more strapping material across the uh, cross pieces so that's the plan for that section and then once that's done uh, we just need to figure out where we're putting the rest of the ordnance which is probably going to go somewhere in here um, obviously we don't want all the weight on the back of the crate but uh, that's where we're at so I'm going to screw those in from the side so before the plane's ever going to come out, right, those need to 
unscrew. All right, so I wanna add some handles on the end of each of the crate, uh, each end of the crate. So what I've done is I've taken some old airline from a compressor hose and take some rope. We're just gonna drill two holes, put the rope through all this, and then we've got a handle to deal with, uh, whether it's shippers or the owner on the other end, and it's gonna make life easier. All right, guys, so cross pieces are installed. Um, I put the padding underneath. The padding is, uh, it's there. And what I did was add a little bit of pressure, put a screw in one side, add a bit of pressure, screw in the other side. So it's, uh, it's snug, but it's, there's not a lot of force pushing down, right? Same thing with that side. So those are done. Um, then I put four cross pieces in to hold any side loads. Now those are of course run on the formers, right? Which is where the strap location is. So we've got two in the front, two in the back on the side there. And then I just put a bead of spray foam just around the perimeter just to hold those. These are tight though, but uh, it's a just in case. Okay, so we've got uh, a few things left to deal with here in the fuselage. So. Wings go on top of these platforms. That's a nice spot for them. Then we've got the uh, the four surfaces, which we're gonna wrap up in bubble wrap and probably put in that front section right there, uh, right here, and then we'll tape them to the fuselage. Uh, we've got the ordnance kit, which is all wrapped up in these um, things. We're gonna wrap those up in bubble wrap. And then we've got this bag of all the spare parts and stuff that I've included with the uh, the airplane. So this is my biggest concern because I don't want to have this uh, rattling around in the in the fuselage or in the airframe at all. So I'm gonna find a nice spot for this and uh, gotta figure that out. This is my biggest concern for sure. Oh, and I forgot to show you guys the handles here. So the handles are done. Um, pretty stinking straightforward how to do those. So anyways, that'll just make it easier for anybody trying to deal with that box. All right, guys, so I've got my, uh, the original airplane manual and that package of extra parts in a massive Ziploc bag. And what I'm gonna do is, so we just wrapped it up in a bunch of bubble wrap, stuffed it down there, it's a nice snug fit. And then I'm just gonna put some tape over here to hold that in place and uh, that should stay put. We also have the wings going right here as well, um, which is gonna hold that from moving around. I'm just gonna put one more strip of bubble wrap over top of the exhaust cones, and then we'll uh, lay the wings in place. Okay, so wings are all in place. Uh, there's not a bunch of tension on the wings, but uh, so we've got one strap holding it down, uh, holding the wing tubes down against the cross brace, and then this strap is just compressing all the wings lightly not really compressing them just holding them in place so anyways that's uh that is done and then those wings aren't going to go anywhere because we've got the wing tubes centered on the uh the foam so one thing i'll do as a precautionary here is i'm just going to wrap some bubble wrap around that portion of the uh the wing and then last thing we need to fit in is the uh the surfaces and the ordinances stuff all right, guys, so we've got the uh, the wings all installed. The uh, the front surfaces are all the other surfaces, rudders and elevators. That actually fit really nice right there. So I put them all in the bags, wrapped them up in bu bubble wrap and stuck right there. Put some foam on the side, spray foam, and uh, it's nice and solid, not going anywhere. Last thing we have to fit in there is the ordnance package. All right, guys, last thing, the ordnance package is all installed or wrapped up and put in the box. Um, so one of the key things I like to do with any plane is make sure nothing's resting on the canopy um, because if it's resting on the canopy, it's gonna get deformed. So that's why you see I didn't put anything above the canopy, around the canopy, on the canopy. The only thing that's close to it is the ordnance package, which I mean, there's, there's one missile that almost weighs nothing in here, like, it's wrapped up with bubble wrap, right? So it pretty much weighs nothing. Um, so we're good to go. I'm just gonna put a piece of tape across there. And uh, last step we need to do is put some side pieces on the box. And I'll show you the final shot before we uh, put the lid on the box. All right, guys, there's a final shot before I put the lid on. 
Everything looks good, I think. It all worked out quite well. Um, basically gonna put the lid on, screw it on, and then I'll show you kind of the last step that I do. All right, guys, there we go. Top is on and she is solid. So if I had to guess, probably about 75 pounds, I think. Maybe, I always tend to overestimate, but there we go, she's all good. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint some arrows on all sides of the box, right? So two on each side, I'm gonna write top on the top, and then some more arrows on the other side. So I'll do that and show you guys what it looks like. All right guys, practicing my graffiti skills on the box. So we basically just covered all sides of the box. with arrows so we know which way is up. Wrote on the top of the box, top. All right, so fairly straightforward. And that is a shipping container. Guys, and I almost forgot one last thing is we need to put the, uh, the forklift spacers on the bottom. So basically you just wanna have something like a two by four. I'm gonna use these, uh, two by twos on the bottom, just to add some space for the forks to go underneath. So I'm just gonna turn the box on its side and screw those pieces on. All right, guys, I hope that this video helped you out. If you are looking at building or shipping an aircraft or anything fragile, really, um, I find that this is a great method to do it. Um, the people that receive the airplane or the whatever you're shipping, really appreciate all the time and effort that goes into proper packaging. I know when I have received products, I really enjoy when they've actually put some time and effort into the packaging of the item that you're getting, especially something like a plane, something fragile. Um, you know, it's always different when you're shipping a complete plane versus um, like a manufacturer shipping you an airframe, way different. You've got uh, you know stuff in the aircraft. It's a lot heavier, so there's a lot more to think about when you're um, when you're dealing with this kind of scenario. All right. So if you guys have any suggestions on how to do this better or ideas that you have, please list them down below. Now keep in mind when I was doing this, um, what did the actual materials cost me? Uh, basically, I'll say nothing, but you know, I, of course, I paid for them at some point, but. Um, you know, all this wood was I either had in my garage or it was out at our piece of land for our house construction. Um, with that, of course, if you guys check out, uh, if you're interested in seeing our house build, I'll put a link to the, uh, the playlist down below. It's on my other YouTube channel. So anyways, there's a link down below under house build. So check it out if you're interested. But um, I had all the materials to build this crate. Of course, it's not you know, beautiful, it's not pristine. Um, it's really not designed to be reused because I spray foamed everything in place. But I know, unless something really crazy happens, that as long as the shipper is, is careful, uh, you know, when this shows up down in California, a few thousand miles away, um, it's still gonna be in good shape and it's gonna arrive perfect for the owner. Knock on wood. Um, so anyways, guys, that is everything. Again, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, list them down below. If you've liked what you've seen in the video, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, that's okay. I don't mind. Give the video a thumbs down. But when you do that, just make sure you push the thumbs down button twice. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.